Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Unified TV Marketing Across a Fragmented Landscape. My name is Ricky Bujlani. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at Audience X. I just wanna thank you for taking a bit out of your time today to join us. I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes uh, to let people finish joining us. And while I do, I'll go over a couple quick notes before we get started. First, we will indeed be having, we'll be indeed sending a recording of this webinar uh, to all registrants afterwards, so everyone can look out for that soon. Additionally, we'll be taking some time to answer any questions that you may have at the end of today's presentation. So if you do have any, uh, go ahead and submit them at any time via the Zoom's Q&A feature or at the bottom of the interface. We'll also be having a poll question, uh, so you, that will pop up on the screen um, as well. So today, Audience X is joined with our partners at Canela Media for a discussion centered around how marketers can bring linear TV, CTV, and digital video together in, a, in one holistic strategy that can improve performance for brands and agencies of any size. Here to guide us through that, a little bit of that today, I'm pleased to introduce our speakers. Joining us from Canela Media, uh, we have Rob Mendev, who is the CEO, Andy Calver, who is the Senior VP of Analytics, and from Audience X, we have Garrett McDonald, who is our Chief Commercial Officer. Rob, Andy, and Garrett, thank you very much for joining us here today uh, and in this discussion. I know it's gonna be great. Before diving into the conversation, if you can briefly introduce your role and background, uh, we'll go ahead and start off uh, with you, Rob. Okay, great. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, appreciate your time. I think we're gonna have a good discussion today uh, with our partners here at Audience X. Um, I'm Rob Medved. I'm CEO of Canela Media. I've been in the media and marketing space, direct consumer marketing space for the better part of 25 years. Um, I started my career having invented an actual product that uh, I sold with our founder of our, our company and my partner, Frank Canella. We sold it on TV um, in, way back in the day in the true direct consumer linear space. Uh, and then we moved on into marketing other products. Um, so we have, we're, we're steeped in understanding direct consumer marketing. Um, and uh, off of that, we pivoted into building out uh, our vertically integrated media and marketing company, Canela Media. And so I've worked um, with hundreds of direct to consumer brands in every vertical from health and wellness, beauty, diet and exercise, lead generation, um, all of the back end. So all of the continuity offers, retargeting and consumer experience motivating and educating and, and script writing and producing, et cetera, um, and have been involved with, you know, anything, basically anything video related with a call to action. And I've worked with brands like P90X, Bissell, Tybo back in the day, KitchenAid, Waterpick, Emerald and Gassy's Air Fryer Oven, uh, Nutrisystem, and on and on and on. And uh, so I've lived this entire fragmentation of the television video content space, starting in traditional cable and broadcast television, and then and then growing up through this complete fragmentation uh, to OTT and streaming and connected TV. And and I've seen all the challenges, and and um, now you know are eager to get into the discussion about all the opportunities that this fragmentation can can uh, you know has brought us today. So. Great. Thanks, Robbie. We'll uh, jump over to you, Andy. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Andy Calver, Senior VP Analytics at Canela Media. Started my career about 25 years ago as a mechanical engineer and then found that I preferred the math on the marketing side uh, a great deal more. Um, been building out big data architectures, reporting systems, data science systems, both on the agency side and the marketer side for a very long time. Um, excited to have this conversation today and I'll, I'll turn it over to Garrett. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for everyone on the call joining us today. As Ricky mentioned, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at Audience X. I've been in ad tech for about 10 years. Um, I look after product, marketing, strategy, sales, client services, and ad operations. And for those of you that aren't as familiar with Audience X, we're a team of experts across programmatic search and social. We have seats on all the major DSPs and buying platforms. We offer a managed service or a self-service buying on our DSP called Admatics. We also have an award-winning brand strategy and creative execution team. Uh, and our approach is really unique. We start with the marketer, what they're trying to solve, what their experience has been, what are the big rocks that they're trying to move. 
Then we go to the customer uh, to really understand consumer behavior. Uh, and then we go to the tech uh, where we combine the power of data plus mind-blowing creative executions, whether it's like web AR or conversational or shoppable or high impact or in-band or video. You know, we combine that data plus creative plus our marketing science team. And it's really that combination of team and tech that uh, sort of like a product for a problem or a solution for a need uh, that really enables us to deliver outsized results for our clients. So uh, thrilled to be here. Thanks for everyone uh, joining. And yeah, we've got a great lineup today. Super excited to get into it. Um, we'll, uh, Ricky, we'll, we'll start off with uh, an overview of the growing problem of fragmentation, as, as uh, Rob had mentioned. Uh, it's been a problem that's plagued the mobile programmatic industry, and it's now manifesting itself in the TV landscape, or, or it has been uh, a growing problem in the TV landscape. And, you know, we used to think mobile programmatic was complicated until video and CTV came along. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the very real opportunities to unify planning and targeting and reporting uh, across all these different channels. Uh, and then we'll talk about how that unified strategy with Canela and Audience X as your secret weapon uh, will help you drive performance across channels and, and how that halo effect uh, will impact other channels' performance as well. Uh, and we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Uh, let's definitely keep it interactive today. We'll save some time to jam through the audience questions before we wrap up. Uh, and it always helps to understand the audience composition uh, and your experience with the TV landscape. So we'll kick things off with a quick poll just to get a sense of uh, you, our, our friends on the call today. Um, so if you could kick off that poll, here we go. So what types of TV advertising are included in your current strategy? Linear TV, streaming TV, both linear and streaming, or neither linear or streaming. Uh, so if you could go ahead and enter your answers there and enter any other questions or comments in the chat, uh, we'll get to those uh, quickly. Give it a couple of seconds here uh, for everybody to get their answers in. All right, so let's kick things off with a deep dive into the TV landscape, uh, and I'll kick it over to you, Rob, for to take us through that. Yeah, thanks, Garrett. Um, you know, so when I started in, in the media marketing space, we had nothing but deterministic attribution. It wasn't called that back then, right? It was, it was just response. There was an 800 number, and that is through linear, traditional linear television, that's how everybody interacted, right? It was basically what, what I would call the early pixel. Um, and it was that, that linear TV space where we were all watching a set lineup at the same time. And there were no other places. So there's no, like Garrett's talking about mobile and, and attribute and OTT and streaming everywhere that we're going to try and unpack today on how to best approach that from a marketing effort. But in traditional linear space at its root, there were no other places to watch ad supported video. That was true linear. And then that space started to disrupt. Soon we had thousands of options. Like when I started, it was broadcast TV with some cable networks then hundreds of cable networks then thousands of cable networks. And then soon, quickly after that, you could watch video over the top. So they went over the cable box, online streaming options, live streaming. And then to complicate it all from a marketing standpoint, um, now you were able to take orders and interactions and, and, and consumer information from organic websites, from affiliates, Amazon, where you don't even have a touch to the consumer, but they're, they're gobbling up from a hard marketing, you know, a hard product marketing standpoint, 30% of the revenue sometimes and, and more. So the way we consumed media totally fragmented, and then the way we ordered or interacted with that media completely fragmented as well. And, um, and so you know, I'm not going to complicate things anymore there because today we're just going to stay focused in this linear and connected TV space and, and how we can get there and how it'll, you know, downstream uh, interact with all of the other uh, digital video efforts. Um, but it's all really, like Garrett said, to 
to drive towards this most profitable unified marketing strategy across this fragmentation. And, uh, and we believe with Audience X that we really, we know that we have this integrated approach that, that can do that. Um, so my job here is I'm just going to set the stage for the linear TV space, basically, and then let Andy and Garrett get into the attribution and modeling and how data and analytics and to Garrett's point, creative iterations can tie this linear and nonlinear marketing effort, effort together. So on this slide, in, well, if you can go back one there, Ricky, um, in this traditional linear space, we're talking about national, regional cable. Um, basically, this is longer formats, right? So we're not, the connected TV effort is going to see stuff less than, for sure, less than the long form 2830 infomercial, or even the five minutes, uh, three minutes deuces and, and cut downs. But um, the great thing about this, this direct consumer marketing effort in the linear space is that you get this brand building halo effect. So you're essentially driving off bottom funnel effort, right? So you're looking for that direct to consumer, um, you know, bottom funnel action, but you're building out this great top and middle funnel incremental capital throughout all this reach and frequency. And we see it all the time, you know, especially with a hard good product, um, you build up all this capital that when you go to retail, it just blows off the shelf because there's so many people that don't interact with a direct to consumer video marketing effort that do still buy it off the shelf. And I think that that's where linear you're going to see, um, you know, can provide uh, just this incremental lift and, and is a space that you really can't be can't be uh, ignoring. Um, next slide, Ricky. And so tying the offline linear to the online OTT streaming and social web efforts, this is where deterministic and probabilistic. So deterministic, where we know exactly where the order came from. We see this in digital all over the place with pixel integration. We know that you, we can follow that customer journey. We can see exactly what they did. We can retarget them. Linear TV still sits in that probabilistic attribution space, right? We have to have really good um, modeling. We have to have really good software, data and analytics. Uh, Andy will talk about that so we can determine what is that lift? What is that uh, responsiveness that we've, you know, we've lost touch with as that 800 number has gone away, but, you know, there's still some consumer interaction and there's still obviously a, a vast consumer that's sitting there that's still interacting with traditional linear television. So uh, this slide, uh, really, this this shows us where we can see that the death of linear television has been really exaggerated. Now, this is just a look back about a year and a half, but we've kind of settled in. So linear still maintains its share of video consumption. So, but the you know the fall that we saw over the last decade that I've seen the subscriber erosion across many platforms, all the MTV MVPDs across the satellite guys, and everything has been enormous. Right, cord cutting has been a headline for the better part of a, a decade or more. But kind of settled into this space where today it's still relevant. Linear TV connected through cable or satellite still is a chunk, and you know connected TV streaming is definitely you know, slotted in space and it's growing, but linear still is relevant. You cannot ignore it as part of your marketing effort. It's just too big. And so linear as, as we traditionally define it um, is continuing to be redefined. There's actually a bit of a rebirth with some of the fast channels where it's free ad supported uh, content and with the advent of ASTC 3.0 in the broadcast arena, that's going to allow further fragmentation of those broad broadcast signals to create essentially uh, over the top, over the air mini cable networks in every region across the country with a feedback loop. Um, we'll see this continue to fragment and change even more. Basically, these lines between linear, nonlinear, OTT streaming, smart TVs, all of the crazy acronyms that we all live in this media world with, they're all going to continue. They're starting to blur a lot, and they're going to continue to blur. And that's why what we're doing and the effort we're making today is, is so vitally important to, to understand that space, to be able to spend the right dollars the right way. So how, how can linear TV still be relevant? Well, I think it's a few things. One, it's an age demographic that's still tied to linear television. And they're basically habitual viewers. They're finding good content. But there's also a younger demographic that is definitely tied to linear television. It's because of live TV, because of live sports, et cetera. When you look at this last year's Super Bowl, I tried to pull some numbers. and 100 million people watch 
Super Bowl in linear television, the linear television space. Only 12 million of them actually streamed it. So that large screen that connected to a cable subscription, connected to a satellite subscription, <clears throat> still remains fairly strong. So, you know, one of the most important reasons not to overlook linear is that it's a lot of this older demographic that's 50 plus that just won't change their habits, but they account for 50% of all consumer spending in the in the US. So they they control a huge part of the wallet, especially as a pro rata percentage of, of, uh, of the number of eyeballs that are watching video content. So that's a lot, a ton of discretionary spend that you cannot ignore. And that's why a, a, a you know a media mix model that includes linear television to address this commerce everywhere is so important and we and we see it when people come from offline uh, from online to offline to increase their marketing spend it really does float all boats in the seas and you can see it drive all of that search integration and everything all the way down the uh, all the way down the uh, consumer funnel so yeah and and we talked about fragmentation in in streaming television you know the proliferation of fast channels and kind of reinvigoration of linear very similar to linear in a lot of ways uh and while this slide looks pretty simple uh a handful of the big super publishers handful of the devices no big deal but it's really the plumbing and the piping and the video infrastructure that's very complex uh you know as i mentioned 1500 fast channels alone but the internet was really architected on the web page. So a lot of the things that are really easy to do with web pages don't exist with video. Uh, for example, like a video in the bitstream uh, or a page to scrape for semantic analysis to understand the content or the way that the actual content gets distributed from, you know, the publisher's content management system to their ad server, to the CTV channel scheduler, to the you know, stitching technology for SSAI, server-side ad insertion, and then out to all the ad platforms. So there's some really amazing partners that we work with that simplify all that fragmentation and lack of transparency for our clients. And then we have some really part, smart people that, uh, you know, are happy to walk through all the nuances and help build the right strategy for, you know, your agency or brand. Um, uh, next slide, Ricky. Uh, we're going to talk about how people stream content. I guess in hindsight, this uh, should have said in big bubble letters, streaming equals the big screen, as Rob has been uh, uh, mentioning. I mean, and it may come so as a surprise, like we all have the ability to stream content anywhere, anytime from our mobile devices, but half of that consumption is happening on the big screen. And over 85% of it is likely on a big screen when you factor in all the 10 foot devices. So this really is uh, an opportunity for a lot of real estate to take advantage of a uh, much better experience. Um, next slide, we'll talk about ad supported streaming, uh, which is also might come as a surprise over 90, 97% of streamers use more than one ad supported service. So uh, almost 20% use four or more ad supported services. And what that what that does is it paints a picture that consumers are much more tolerant of ads on the big screen. Uh, in fact, you know, the stats, the stats say that, you know, you experience higher recall and higher ad influence and perhaps lower annoyance factor as you're, you know, browsing, uh, you know, games or websites uh, and even better measured performance than serving ads uh, surrounding around content and mobile games and, and, and on websites. And so, while we would never suggest cutting those channels, uh, truly omni-channel uh, impact performance halo effects that we've talked about, uh, because you have to meet the consumer where they are in the journey. And if you believe in the laws of advertising, that first impression really does the most work. Uh, so it's really important to incorporate these channels into the media mix uh, and dedicate at least 30 to 40% of your TV budgets to ad supported streaming TV. Uh, and the facts are that, you know, consumers are growing more and more receptive to ads on the big screen versus, you know, banners surrounding around content. Um, and this streaming is really becoming a performance channel. So next slide, we'll talk about uh, the myth of multitasking. I mean, you know, we continue to see second screen engagement through the roof when it comes to CTV. Um, nearly 80% of us are using a mobile device while watching streaming content. Uh, over 30% of us have purchased products. 
uh, after being exposed to them on CTV. And then over 30% of us are also using a mobile device to research products that we've been exposed to. So whether you purchase or whether you are researching, there's a lot of that second screen engagement that's really driving a lot of uh, you know engagement as well as performance, obviously. So we went over some of the unique capabilities and outcomes that the Canela Media team can deliver. We went over some of the fragmentation. And now we're going to kick it over to Andy to walk us through some of the insights on how to unify all these channels. So over to you, Andy. Cool. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah. So this slide should really be called um, cable TV is not dead. So 63% <laughs> of households have both a streaming platform and cable TV. Um, folks that only have cable TV are at 9%, are at but that means almost three quarters of households in the U.S. still have cable TV in-house. Um, from a video streaming platform, 23 of folks, 23% of households just have the video streaming. So a whopping 86% in total have some kind of streaming into the home. But each, each channel, both streaming and linear TV have different advantages, right? As Rob mentioned, linear TV, you can really reach that audience that controls the wallet. Whereas with streaming, you're starting to reach that audience that sits there with their device next to them and they are making purchasing decisions as they go. So with that combination available in the home, it makes sense in a strategic media plan to have both channels involved. So we can just go on to the next one. Thank you. Um, so this one, again, linear TV is the huge amount of ad spend simply because you are reaching those folks that are making buying decisions, right? And you can see connected TV spending beginning to ramp up, but linear TV is by no means um, by no means dead, which is where everyone thought we were going to be. But instead, it, it came down over a few years and now is projected to remain flat um, for the foreseeable future, really. And we can tell a completely different story on linear TV as well. So it's really about expanding your reach to different audiences. So this is, this is it in a nutshell, right? So linear TV reaches a certain group. There's another group that's CTV only. And then there, there is that portion in the middle, which has a combined linear and CTV um, the content. Now, if you're trying to reach that younger demographic, um, that's great through CTV. 77% of folks under 34 um, were unique to CTV um, from a trade desk study. So they were not reached by ads on linear TV and, they, and the only way to reach them was through CTV, so. So this is a great view of this one. Um, from an awareness to acquisition scale, um, there's a whole length of spots that are available when you combine CTV and linear. Most CTV spots are 15s and 30s. Sometimes there are a few platforms where you can negotiate 45s and 60s. 60s are fairly rare. Um, and those are great for driving awareness, but you really need high frequency to incite that action. And as Rob had mentioned at the beginning, with linear, you can go all the way to that 2830, the long form spot, the infomercial spot, which gives someone so much information that they're ready to purchase at the end of the spot. And you don't even have to drive them to the web. And traditionally, you would drive them to a telephone number. Um, so very low frequency on that side to incite action. And the great thing is, too, if you produce a 2830, you have so much material, you can cut down to a three and a five or a 60 or a 15 quite easily from there. And you can get that entire spectrum of awareness all the way through acquisition when you combine CTV with linear TV. Um, so that brings us to the question of uh, attribution. So one of the great things with CTV advertising is it is a deterministic model. And so there is this one-to-one -one model um, where I send an ad pod to a household, I then see that house that household convert on my on the website, and I can connect them one to one. The linear side is a little more difficult. We have to use a um, probabilistic model to do that. But what we do is we can take that entire architecture and join it together to create what's known as a household graph, and that involves connecting IDs across various platforms to connect everyone and figure out the customer journey from CTV to linear and all the way through digital, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera. 
Um, and with that technology, we can cover 80 million households in the United States. So this is um, an overview of how a lot of this works. Uh, traditional TV, we have a team of buyers that works very closely with our account executives um, to determine what are the right day parts and stations. A lot of that is purchase negotiated up front. Uh, we receive what's known as a pre-log, which is the plan for the upcoming week or weeks. And then afterwards, something is aired, we receive a post-log and we true everything up. Um, and that's how you would purchase there. Whereas on the CTV side, that's really become programmatic and you have uh, the demand side platform, essentially bidding and a bid, essentially a bidding and auction system, which is purchasing ads and sending them out. Um, the devices, uh, the cable box, the, the set-top box, that's very common. I think everyone is, has seen one of those at some point. Um, and then obviously on the connected TV side, smart TV is huge because that connects both, um, but people are also consuming content on laptops, phones, um, and the like. So uh, the content. So this is the uh, multi-channel video programming distributor. Um, you have a physical box, which provides that cable and satellite TV channels. Um, and we're starting to bridge some of the gap there with virtual MVPDs, such as Hulu Live TV, um, where it is essentially a, a live channel, but you can get to it virtually. Um, and then the other half of that is your video on demand, where you go on, you select what you're going to watch, and those um, are either on the subscription side, or they can also be ad-supported. Um, but when you put all this together, you end up with this concept of TV ev everywhere, right? So you've got linear TV combined with CTV. I'll turn this back over to Garrett to talk about the different ad formats that are available. Yeah, thank you. So I, I mentioned this at the top of the call, like mind-blowing creative and unique and innovative ad formats and experiences are really critical to driving greater ROAS. And these are just a few examples, but Pause ads, you know, non-disruptive ad experiences perform really well because it's, you know, served at a, at a natural break in the viewing experience. Uh, and very similar to binge ads, uh, they can be used in a way to reward users for their engagement. Uh, binge ads, exactly as it sounds, a great way to reward the user with an exclusive offer or, you know, upcoming segments that are ad-free. Uh, and then engagement ads, also very self-explanatory. These can be, you know, store locators, scrollable catalog, shoppable ads, or even trivia. And we have some really innovative solutions to drive engagement and conversion with CTV. And I'm not just talking about QR codes, although that is one uh, component. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can drive increased engagement. And I'm kind of, I'm really excited about the advertising industry, uh, despite all of the headwinds and, you know, privacy and identity and addressability and mounting legislation around, you know, data handling, uh, there's this resurgence back to creative and brand strategy and ad formats that is really, you know, uh, showing itself in, you know, the big screen where it's such a large uh, real estate, large opportunity to in drive engagement. Um, and there's some best practices. So while it may seem obvious as students of, you know, the industry and the ecosystem and always trying to learn, we, we see a lot of ads in the wild from brands that we don't work with where the QR code is done wrong or it's unclear what the call to action is or, you know, maybe not as clear what the product or the company does. So we offer these simple but highly effective pieces of advice for all you marketers out there. Tell them what you do best and tell them what you want them to do. Um, and we have a submission inbox to test your creative at hello at audiencex.com, where we have a team of award-winning creative experts that are uh, happy to share their expertise uh, or their perspective on how to improve your creative strategy for the big screen. So feel free to reach out to us or type your questions in the chat. Uh, and then we're going to talk about delivering the results uh, with a unified strategy. So. Um, you know, a lot of it is reliant on, you know, uh, understanding first party data and all the you know, zero party data, first party, second party, third party, and really bridging that gap between the use of the application of data uh, and the devices, screens, channels, platforms and devices. And so there's a bunch of layers that this slide is hitting on. Um, 
think of it like a cake where you have five layers where, you know, the top of the layer is, is, uh, you know, whether it's CTV or, or display, it's all about the content and you need to know what the content, uh, and you need to know about the content, what's inside the content to be able to align your creative with that topic of content so that you can drive relevance and recall and response and lift and purchase intent and all the, you know, things that are most important. So Next layer is the inventory, which is also very fragmented. I mean, our, our clients want to be, actually, if you could back up one. Um, the next layer is that uh, inventory fragmentation where our clients really want to be as close to the source as possible. Uh, and the third layer is that is are, are the audiences. So also very, very fragmented. Um, we have PR to follow on this, but you heard it here first. Uh, very pleased to report that we now have access to the world's largest opted in and consented database uh, with the ability to predict uh, the, the likelihood of an outcome with over 90% accuracy. And we pair that data with our custom prediction algorithms that are really tailored to your KPIs so that you can deliver you know, greater ROAS uh, than you know, your marketing team would be able to buy on these major DSPs. Uh, and then the fourth layer is the devices. So device proliferation with, you know, internet connected devices leads to fragmentation. And it's very important to, you know, as I said earlier, to meet the consumer or the user where they are in the journey. And then finally, we have measurement, which is also very fragmented. Also, uh, you know, perhaps obvious to everyone on the call here that it's being re redefined as we speak. You know, the old model is not compatible with the new model. And what looks like a patchwork of solutions that's required, which is why I'm so excited about the partnership with Canela and their tribute attribution, uh, combined with our unified reporting and advanced analytics. I mean, it, it really is that force multiplier for your marketing objectives. And it's a combination of these two assets that gives our customers the unfair advantage uh, so that we can put as much of our client dollars into working media that's targeted to the highest value audiences. And while that's really easy to say and much harder in practice, uh, it's not our first barbecue. We've been, you know, continue to deliver outsized results for agency and brand partners for over a decade. Um, and, you know, that second call, maybe I should have used some different words there because we don't need your customer file or your purchaser data, but suppression lists definitely help. Uh, and there's no question about it that your first party data represents the best seed audience for us to build a curated inventory base off of either modeled or predictive audiences so that we can scale performance. Um, now you can flip to the next one. We'll talk about uh, a couple of things that are really important. I mean, we can report on anything we see and we've seen it all. It really starts with uh, the, you know all the signals and we've set up ingestion pipelines and routines for all the major platforms. Um, we also have the opportunity to enrich those signals with some of our data partners. Uh, and then from there, we can inform targeting and deliver better outcomes. And it's really the, uh, I guess, the our analytics and insights team sums it up pretty simply. It's like, you know, reporting is reading the news on what happened yesterday or today or in the last few minutes, whereas the insights are the so what or, the, you know, the what I should do about it. And it's those actionable insights that really help our clients deliver greater outcomes, whether it's you know, mapping the customer journey like Rob was talking about or attributing mar marketing spend to those measured outcomes or, you know, whether we're simulating or actually measuring the business impact of marketing and advertising uh, to be able to implement these predictive models. So I'll hand it over to Andy to talk about Tribute uh, and take us through the mechanics here of their unique and proprietary measurement technology. Cool. Thanks, Garrett. Um, so this is the uh, an overview of the Tribute data architecture that we have built in-house. This is entirely uh, housed within the Canela data infrastructure. Um, we take a variety of data sources, uh, pixel tracking. You'll, we'll talk about the Canela uh, Tribute pixel in a second. Digital ad serve data, linear airings, QR codes. We store all that in the data warehouse. Um, all raw data goes in at this, what we call a bronze level, and then we begin to aggregate and calculate through that silver and gold level. Um, at our data science level, we are not only running linear attribution, 
but building customer journeys and building out multi-touch attribution as well. Um, and with the final goal of delivering, here is the optimal media mix across multiple different channels. Um, something that isn't on here is our capabilities around lifetime values. So you may have a campaign where you see uh, a return on ad spend of 0.6 for your monthly cohort. And then um, as they roll into a subscription business, you begin to look back and you can see that ROAS increasing. And so what may not look like a campaign that's working properly out of the gate actually becomes very profitable later on. And so we take all that into account um, as we build this out. A lot of act, a lot of ways to work with clients to get the data out because um, as Garrett alluded to, uh, the data sitting there doesn't do us any good. You've got to have the reporting and the ability to act on those insights. And so we do have a Tableau server that we use um, for client reporting. We have dedicated BI managers for that to work with clients and get the data they need. Um, some clients want to just get data and, and incorporate it into their own systems. Uh, we have that ability as well. We can send CSVs around uh, the old fashioned way. Uh, we can even carve out um, portions of our database and share that actively with clients as well. So, so this system is very fast. It's um, very reliable. It's hosted in the cloud um, and scalable for what we need to do. So this is the uh, tribute pixel. So a lot of companies get into trouble when they um, bring in a third party pixel. And so we have built our own. Uh, this is housed, again, entirely in the Canela IT infrastructure, and this allows us to track a, um, track a customer up and down the funnel and across channel. Um, and from there, we can get a perceived level of interest, um, how far down the funnel they get, and so that is suitable for retargeting campaigns. Um, and from a privacy standpoint, if someone opts out of IP tracking, we can bring them in fully anonymously. Um, and protect their uh, protect their identity that we don't we don't know who they are and so all that can be hidden on the back end but can provide insights as well so um, linear attribution so this is always uh, the puzzle right as we talked about CTV is that one to one deterministic um, model for linear we take web response and apply. Uh, taking web response and applying pixel data back to that, we can see who is responding to, um, to linear spots. So we only bring in visits that are clean of other campaigns. So we don't bring in any Facebook data or TikTok data or anything like that. Um, only folks that have come in either directly, organically, or through a paid search channel do we look at. Um, and then from the graph on the right here, you get an example of what that response looks like. So there's an airing at 958, there's an immediate web response. We can drop those folks into the customer journey that we store in the data warehouse and we can add them to that media mix model. Um, we're not gonna get into the, a lot of the details on how this works, um, but we also provide a fractional attribution if there's multiple airings. If an airing in this case happens at um, 956, we can also then begin to, with a high level of certainty, attribute uh, those visitors and those conversions back to the appropriate airing. Um, and so we, this is an ongoing process. Um, we make sure this model is running correctly throughout the length of a campaign. It's not a set and forget. Um, and the analytics team is actively involved reviewing this on a weekly basis to, to really work with the account executives to optimize campaigns. Um, last one we'll talk to is, uh, this is multi-touch attribution. And so really each point along the journey is important. Um, in this case here, uh, the display ad click. Um, that is an assisting channel, and it may not be the final last touch driver, but is super important in that chain. And so we're able to find those important pieces of the multi-touch journey and um, weight those appropriately in the media mix model. So we're very careful about how we do this. And I think I'm going to turn it back to Garrett.
Yeah, so we are going to summarize the key takeaways. And and I think, uh, you know, I think Rob had summed it up uh, quite succinctly that uh, don't forget about cable, uh, you know, distinguish on linear between uh, traditional and, and, you know, fast channels um, and, you know, making sure that you incorporate uh, you know, omni-channel strategies, uh, you know, have, have been shown to prove the best engagement and performance uh, with that halo effect that one campaign channel can have on the next. So um, I think, Rob, you had some some uh, close, closing remarks. Um, yeah, I, I think, don't want to steal I, your thunder. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> changed a little bit because you brought something to attention that I think is vitally important, and that is the you know, what we can do, what you can do, what you guys do so well on the creative iterations, right? So when you're looking at all of this space from 2830s all the way down to tens, essentially, you, you, you have to meet the platform and the medium with the right messaging, right? With the right hook, with the right creative. And that goes across linear television, non-linear TV, digital, um, right on down. So and we see that we all de we all deal with the platforms. If you don't have the right TikTok ad, it's not going to perform because you have to know the space. The same is true with linear and nonlinear television. And so creative is very important, Garrett. I think that that's one thing that we should bubble back to the top. You guys do it really well. So, but overall, the 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 reality is that the the lines are blurring all the time between the 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 media mix models that we deal with, and it's going to continue to blur, right? You know, who knows where ASTC 3.0 and where streaming and where the smart TV, which arguably is the iPhone set on your wall, and that controls the consumer experience. Where does this all go? Well, we're active in this space. And we're monitoring it every day. But at the end of the day, it really is about making sure that you have an attribution model in place to making sure that you're spending the right media dollars in the best effort to acquire customers or to, to get your messaging out based on your uh, key selling metrics. And, um, and it, it, you know, and the reality is, is that linear is here to stay. It's still, we're still tethered in many, many ways, especially in that 50 plus demographic to this large screen on the wall. There is a, a huge connected TV pace, piece as well. But in all of this space, we're, we're using other mediums, phones, tablets, desktops, laptops to interact. And so to be able to reach and retarget and to understand who our consumer is and hit them with that right message at the right time on the right device, and then attribute it all back to that media ad spend. I think that's really, you know, kind of wrapping it up. And we, and you, Audience X and Canelo together, we do this exceptionally well. We have very talented people that have put in big, big seven figures of investment into our business intelligence and analytics teams to get, um, to get where we are today. So, yeah, I think if I could build on that just real quick, like the, you know, ha having partners that uh, have been in the space for as long as Canela has and, you know, a decade for us uh, at Audience X, I mean, it's like, you know, helping you invest with confidence and navigating some of these sea change events. You talk about how things are going to change and where the, you know, space is going. I mean, that's one thing I know that our clients are, you know, helps them invest with confidence in these new and, and, uh, emerging, uh, channels. So, um, thanks for, uh, the, the key takeaways and Ricky, uh, you know, how are we doing on questions? Should we get to get to the questions? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks Garrett. So, uh, we do have some questions, uh, from the audience, but before we get started on the questions, I'll just go through the poll and the poll results and get your, get the speakers, uh, uh, point of view on it. So I'll just repeat the question. What types of TV advertising are included in your current strategy? So to, uh, for linear TV, we have a 12%, streaming TV at 2%, both linear and streaming TV at 81%, and then neither linear or streaming at 5%. Uh, so just wanted to get your, uh, you know, the speaker's thoughts on, on the, some of the results that, uh, from the poll. Well, I would say it sounds like the vast majority of our audience members are uh, leveraging both channels. Uh, and so I know uh, that has been a strategy that we've obviously been recommending for the last you know, 45 minutes, but also for the last several years as, as this, uh, you know, these opportunities emerge. So it, in some ways, it doesn't surprise me, but in other ways, 
you know, we'd love to explore ways that we could augment what you're doing to deliver greater engagement and performance and um, work with you on creative executions, as well as better measurement and reporting and insights that uh, that we have a lot of experiences Rob mentioned with. So, yeah, I think that's the key point there, Garrett, is that there's a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of people living in both spaces, but there's a lot of people that aren't doing it well. And so, you know, this is a business of very, very small percentages to to beat your comp competition, which is everybody else that's existing and driving that ad, that cost of that ad space up. And so in order to do it to the best of your abilities, you need to be cutting edge. And that's where we come in. Yeah, well said. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move to the audience question. Um, this is more of a uh, comment. Uh, so look to get your uh, feedback on how to improve. So the question is, Generating frequency on streaming has not done well for us in lead gen because it seems to be difficult to reach the same audience multiple times. So have you seen, you know, how can this, per, you know, how can we improve performance from here? Uh, I mean, that, that speaks to me, at least, my first reaction is, and you know, there's probably some nuances or some other details that would be really helpful in in you know articulating how to improve results or frequency on linear and CT and streaming. Um, but it 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 really speaks to me around the data. So, um, you know, being able to understand primary devices in the household, as an example, is a really you know great way to uh you know hit uh users with more frequency or increased frequency um they used to measure households by you know number of humans uh now it's measured by number of connected devices and so if you've got you know five connected TVs and you've got five tablets because they give them away for new new upgrades these days uh and you've got two cell phones you know which is the primary device for ad serving and that's really what we've spent a lot of time on uh, and using data and insights to increase frequency on uh, streaming is something that, you know, we'd love to unpack further with you and, and learn more about the workflow and perhaps some of the partners and, and technology that, you, that you've used to see if there are ways that we can augment uh, and, and deliver greater, greater performance. So, yeah, I think that's Garrett, we've worked on a couple of things that we've had some great effort in. Um, and I think at the end of the day, you, you got to know what the offer is. What vertical are we talking? You know, it's hard to answer something where you don't really understand exactly what, what, what the offer is, what's the audience that they're trying to, you know, go after. Um, but um, we'd love to have an opportunity to get into that, the details of that discussion, I think, because we've been effective in, in, that, in that realm. Yep. Got it. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question is what kind of minimum budget is needed to get started in these channels? I mean, for us, we have, you know, 25 K minimum. Um, it's really a statistically relevant sample size of media across multiple channels that, you know, requires amount of data to, to be able to, you know, produce and deliver meaningful results. Um, there are campaigns and initiatives, uh, you know, that we have taken campaigns that are smaller than that, but usually you want to have a well thought out strategy, uh, you know, omni channel, mixing in, you know, creative executions that tell the story of the brand to really drive performance and that halo effect across channels. So, um, you know, it depends on how much you're investing in advertising and acquisition and a lot of different factors. But I would say that would be, you know, kind of the the starting point for us to to put together a really robust strategy on how you can achieve your goals. And like I said at the beginning, like, you know, it starts with a marketer understanding, you know, what are the big rocks you're trying to move? What are the things that are top of mind? Are you, you know, have you solved for privacy? Have you really figured out your first party data strategy? Are you enriching and augmenting that first party with, uh, you know, other types of data? Are you leveraging content signals? You know, there's a lot that we, you know, really try to dig in on with our clients to really understand the marketer mindset, the marketer dilemma, all those sorts of things. And then, as I mentioned, it, it, it goes to the, to the customer from there 
understanding consumer behavior, where, you know, what sort of things have driven performance in the past. And so um, with that combination and that approach, uh, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what we can uh, do to improve uh, performance. Great. Uh, on the linear side, is there a minimum amount typically? No, we're at the same bench. We're at the same benchmark. It's you know by by channel though. So if you're gonna do long form, it would be a, a, a twenty to twenty five thousand dollar test. If you're gonna do short form, it would be the same thing. Um, but we also have a massive cost per acquisition network. So thinking of, a, of a, like a like a DSP. So you you know where we work with the marketers with the um, to set a benchmark for what that acquisition target is, and then we can roll out for there. That really has no cost of entry. It's just kind of part of that media mix model on, on linear television. Got it. Thank you. So uh, next question, how do you approach blending probabilistic, linear, and deterministic nonlinear non attribution models to drive full funnel optimizations? Yeah, I, so I'll step in on this one. So obviously on the CTV side, that is deterministic. Um, and on the linear side, that is your probabilistic model. Um, but by using the tribute pixel, in both areas, we are able to combine the customer journeys for both. And so someone can come in um, on the CTV channel, and then we can catch them on the linear channel as well and follow them all the way through the customer journey. So a lot of that is driven by the tribute pixel. Great. Thanks, Andy. Uh, next question. Do available longer length formats in linear tend to drive better directly attributable mid-lower funnel conversions? Can repeat the uh, question again. Do available longer length formats in linear tend to drive better directly attributable mid lower funnel conversions? Oh, for sure. You're getting a more qualified consumer, right? So, when you, anytime you're able to get into a creative that explains more of the key selling benefits, if you can get into short form that has some kind of testimony or emotional uh, drive to response. Um, you know, again, our job as marketers is to build the highest perceived value for for the offer um, uh, to drive that response. And the more time you have to do that, and the more creative assets you can bring to, to the table to engage that consumer and then qualify them, um, for sure. Yeah. And again, it goes back to this halo effect, right? So the longer length, you, you, you're getting reach of frequency, but you're getting more information out there and you're getting more branding, right? So you're moving much further up that funnel, which has all that, you know, all of that built-in capital then down the line, whether you go retail, whether you're on Amazon, whatever it may be. So yeah, for sure. Great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, last question here um, is for nonlinear, what safeguards are in place to ensure brand safety and delivery of quality impressions? So I can take this one. Um, this so this this is where you know the the internet was architected on the web page, and so because the the URL is not passed in the bid stream, uh, there's no companies that can go and just scrape that uh, video and understand what's inside the content, which is really what we're talking about here. Is the video that's either on a page, on a web page, online video, or in CTV is the video brand safe or suitable is the content with inside the video. And so you think about like an advertiser that wants to target uh, comedy, for example, where there's like 700 cat categories or of that genre comedy. So you could have an advertiser like um, DraftKings that's okay with, you know, targeting uh, comedy and receiving or serving an ad on, you know, uh, the hangover, for example, versus an advertiser like Huggies or Charmin, who would prefer to, you know, serve their ads around content that is not salacious or not risque or, you know, more children's content like the Elf. And so working with partners and leveraging signals like the content object and other identifiers that are in the bid stream, whether it's app or channel or genre, um, and then working with partners that really do understand what's inside the video is really important for you to align creative with the topic of content. All right, thanks, Carrot. Uh, so that does bring us uh, to the end of the Q&A section. So I just want to thank you, Rob, Andy, and Garrett for participating. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's session. 
Uh, we will be sending a recording of this webinar to all the registrants afterwards, so you can look uh, look out for that soon. If you have any questions, you can feel free to connect with you know Rob, Andy, Garrett on social media or uh, through email here. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.